Good evening, guys, and welcome to another Monday message. My name is Pedro. I'm one of the youth pastors here at Creo, and today it's my pleasure to bring you guys the message. Today I'm going to be taking a look at how God helps us to command the storms in our lives. One day, Jesus decided to tell his disciples that he needed to cross the Sea of Galilee. So they all get on the boat, and they all pile in, and immediately it says in the scriptures that Jesus fell asleep near the back of the boat. It's important to remember that, near the back of the boat. It says also that about halfway through or later on that day, just almost immediately after, a storm hit. It was a really bad storm. Uh, lots of waves, lots of wind, um, water's coming in, the boats feels like they're going to capsize every single time, and Jesus is still asleep. Now, in the back of the boat, there's something called the tiller. That's the thing that controls where the boat is going. Usually, the most experienced sailor hopped onto that spot. Right? Nobody that's inexperienced would go in there, and Jesus is asleep besides the tiller. Um, with whoever's controlling it, doesn't say in the scriptures, but he's whoever's controlling it. Uh, and the storm's getting bad. The apostles are fighting against the storms. They're bailing water. They're trying to keep the sail from ripping. They're doing all these things to try to keep themselves from dying. And eventually, it looks like the storms is just too much for them. They cannot handle it. They cannot uh, stop the boat from sinking. So they do the one thing they have left. They cry out to Jesus and they say, Jesus, help us. We're about to drown. You know, Jesus immediately gets out from where he was sleeping, uh, amazing that he can sleep through a storm, uh, and immediately just speaks to the, to the wind and speaks to the waves, and he says, quiet, be still, and then immediately the storm stopped. Now, then he turns to his disciples, and kind of crossed and angrily, like I'm not sure you would have felt if somebody woke you up from a dead sleep, and he basically yells at them and says, where, are your, where was your faith? Where was your trust? And then the disciples turn to each other and go, man, who is this guy who can command the sea and the storms and, and they obey him? Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is right now a lot of us are going through the storms of uh, having to be in, in isolation because of the virus is happening. A lot of fear in the world, a lot of fear out in the, in the streets. Uh, in the news, if you turn on them, there's 24 hours coverage on, on this disease. And it is very sad. But I'm trying to tell you today that there is a lot of power in knowing that Jesus is with you. One of the things that I ask you to remember is where Jesus was sleeping. Remember that I told you that? He was sitting near the tiller, near the controls, right beside the most experienced pilot. All that pilot needed to do was to shake Jesus awake and Jesus would have actually stopped the, the storm before it hit. I think it could have happened, but they didn't. They, all of the apostles did something that all of these humans do. We tried to do everything ourselves. We're not going to bother God. He's too busy doing something else. At this point, Jesus was sleeping. Um, he was human. He doesn't need to sleep anymore, by the way. So right now, they're trying to bail. They're trying to keep themselves above, above water. They don't want to drown. They're doing all their effort, fighting against the, uh, Mother Nature. Basically, it's impossible to fight against a storm. If you've ever gone sailing, it's, it's dangerous to go out in a storm. But they're trying to fight against it. They're trying to fight against this thing with their own strength. And Jesus was right there. And finally, just like we do, they got smart and woke him up. Now, it's interesting how, how they do that. Because remember, in our lives, whenever a storm hits, whether it's uh, a job loss or this disease that's happening right now, or it could be uh, issues in their families, it could be a myriad of all things, things we don't see. One thing that I want you guys to remember this is this. Jesus is on the boat with you. Remember this. Jesus is on the boat with you. In the boat of your life. As we travel through this journey, I want you to remember that Jesus is just right beside you. He never leaves you. He never leaves you alone. He doesn't fall asleep anymore because he's not human. He's, he's God. Um, he doesn't need to sleep. But he's always aware. He's always ready. Uh, now, one thing that the apostles feared was that they were going to die. They forgot that Jesus had told them that they needed to get to the other side. It was an imperative mission that he had. So you always have to remember to remember, remind yourself of your mission when you're going through a storm. God will not let you fail. That He will not let you die until your purpose on earth is done. Our days are numbered and counted by God. He knows exactly what you are going to do, what, you, what he wants you to do with your life, what you need to do. And he will not let you pass away until the day that he deems it right. Now that's something that's Kind of weird, but it is comforting. It means that you don't have to be afraid all the time because when it's your time to go and it's my time to go, it's okay. It's my time because that's what God ordained. 
and we can have peace on that. We can actually have assurance of that. So until that happens, until God is done with me, I will keep working and, and trying to do the mission that He has called me to do. And I hope that you do the same. Remember, Jesus is with you at all times. Whatever the storms happen, whatever happens, right now it's this virus, but tomorrow it could be another thing. It could be going through a divorce. It could be facing um, a, a massive financial problems after this. It could be, a, you know, job loss. It could be, uh, you know, the school not working out. All of these storms can hit. But I want you to remember this. Jesus is with you. And you can take that to the bank. He is going to stand with you no matter what. He will give you hope. He will give you strength. And He will keep you from failing and falling. Because that's the kind of God He is. He loves to take care of your people. Now, one of the other things that I want you to remember is this. One of the things that always strike me, it strikes me is the way that Jesus talked to the storm versus the way that He talks to the disciples. When He talked to the storm, He was actually, if you do some digging, and I do some digging because that's what I do, is he, the way that the tense that he is, is written is actually almost like a, 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 somebody trying to calm down a very frightened and very scared animal. That's how He spoke to the storm. That's why he said, peace, be still, was a way of actually calming down an animal, a frightened a goat or a sheep or anything like that, or a horse, um, to make sure that they're, they're, they calm down. And that's how he spoke to the storm. Pretty scary thing. But the way that he, spoke to his, he speaks to his disciples was really angry and crossed. He was almost annoyed by the fact that they didn't know what to do. And also that they waited this long to call on him. And the one thing that he tells them is, like, where is your faith? Where is your trust? You know, you have weak faith. It's amazing that he called them out on the strength of their faith. Now, one of the things that God instituted, and we do it regularly, and we're going to be taking care of, of this in a minute, is how do we strengthen our faith? How do we do that? How do we have faith strong enough to speak into a storm and say, quiet, be still? Well, one of the ways we do that is through fasting. Now, a Creo starting this Friday, we're going to start a 21-day fast. And uh, your parents and everybody should have gotten an email with the registration link. Uh, we want everybody to pick a day with their cruise, and we want no day to be left empty. We want everybody to pick a day to fast. It could be a meal. It could be um, an entire day. It could be a few hours. That's up to you. We are going to fast, first of all, for a miracle. We're going to fast for a miracle that God will stretch out His hand of healing and heal all the people who are sick in hospitals, who are suffering at home with this COVID-19. And we are going to believe that God will heal those people globally, not just here in Vancouver and not in your home if you're sick. We want God to stretch out His hand and stop this thing. We're going to, as Scripture says, we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to stretch out and heal our land. Because I believe and we believe in Creo that God is a healing God. And he's a powerful God. He's the one that calmed the storms and He's going to stop this one too. So we're going to go to Him first rather than wait for us to come up with all the solutions or wait for some magical silver bullet to come out of nowhere to fix all of this. We're going to go to God and we're going to ask Jesus to calm this storm. So all you need to do is click on the link, and we're going to send that out again this week to make sure that you register with your crew, talk with your crew, talk with your people, parents, talk with your families, everybody. We want as many people as possible to fast with us um, and, and to take some time out of this these couple of weeks, next couple of weeks, next 21 days to fast starting this Friday um, evening. Good Friday, it's a good time to fast. Now, why do we fast? Because fasting helps us strengthen our faith. Faith is like a muscle. It needs uh, some exercise once in, every once in a while. And most of the time, we tend to wait until there's storms to exercise this muscle. Now, that's like waiting for a marathon in order to learn how to run. It's not very effective. Rather, if we incorporate fasting into our daily lives, into our, our, our weekly rhythms, we learn how to not only listen to God's Spirit better, to attune ourselves to His Spirit, but also it strengthens our faith so when storms come, we can actually withstand a little bit more. Yeah, we, Jesus is not physically with us anymore, but we can still depend on Him. But He wants us to try and first of all, be quicker to ask Him for help. And secondly, to actually withstand some storms that we need to 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 withstand and not only that but also command them to be still and be quiet because in scriptures as jesus said if you remain in me greater things than this will you do now remember this if you remained in jesus greater things than that 
you will do. He was talking to his disciples. Imagine G they saw Jesus raise people from the dead, the blind seeing, the, uh, the deaf hearing. That's how Jesus did. Now, greater things than those they were going to do. And this translates to us, you and I as Christians now, as his followers now, that even if we remained in Jesus, we are going to do great things, even commanding storms in our lives to stop.